a good story editor needs um, to to get on the right page and discover in you, the the creator and filmmaker, what it is you're really most trying to do and say and what you feel strongest about, and then not undermine that by having a better idea or anything like that, but maybe to help guide or slightly challenge or, in my case, I find, um, I, I, I try not to be prescriptive, but I will pitch ideas to go, you know, every story has a logic. And we have to, as a story editor, um, and as a creator too, you try to decode, you know, what's the DNA of this story? We have to learn to write every story in itself, right? We can bring all kinds of guidelines and principles and we can read all the how-to books and, and walk around with a lot of theory, but we have to learn how to write every single story from scratch. This story needs, you know, and so as a story editor and, and consultant, we try to help you discover that, um, pitch ideas to help discover that and find the real essence of it, and then um, at best where possible, protect that. If you're fortunate enough to develop a relationship with your story consultant, script consultant, uh, as, as another, you know, player in the team, then that person can actually help you define so that it does offer you a way to talk about your project to all those people that you necessarily will have to talk to. You, you're going to have to, I mean, either you or the producer will have to talk or, you know, be in, in communication with all those people who demand some, some, some play, you know, because they give you money. So if you're, if you develop a sort of security about what you're doing through the relationship with your team, all your team, but in that in that part, before you get on the set, you know, and it, we work with people all the way up to, you know, when they get on the set, basically, and then come back in the editing process. But as a script consultant, you know, you you can help reinforce the ideas of the writer, of the director, so they, they can relax a little bit and say, well, you know, I, I know these things, I've, I've been asked these things a thousand times. I know the answer to it. I don't have to go in a, in a discussion or a battle about it. I, I know what the answer is. I can just smile and say, thank you for your comment. <laughs> no, it doesn't actually help you to relax a little bit. In Europe, you have a lot of platforms of development for script. And um, sometimes you have a lot of uh, experts who work on it and who give you a different opinion on your script. and. Um, and sometimes you have opinion about from, from commissions who, who sometimes put a lot of money uh, in the film, for example, for television, which required a sort of film. So you have maybe two, sometimes they're rats, sometimes they're not, sometimes they just want a commercial movie. And uh, the, right, the author and the producer often are a little bit in the uh, middle of this kind of ocean of uh, waves and they they forgotten how to swim on, on that mm -hmm. and they uh, and they can really um, i mean go down with the author and the script i mean itself mm -hmm. so um or the other problematics is the washing machine so you put in the script in the washing machine <laughs> and when uh, you know he gonna to be washed and washed and washed and washed it's very clean at the end but he's uh, <laughs> it's just uh, <laughs> i mean i make it no colors left no <laughs> colors left okay <laughs> and um so i will i i didn't i have no um, no advice you know to give a producer do that because that's that's just impossible. But I can say to you, as I come from, I mean, from the market side, from a co-production co found, from sales manager, I had sometimes television in touch, you know, etc. And I, I just told, and I came also from the side of creative, I mean, from the creative side, and now as script editor and consultant and script writer, I can just say to you. Um, I mean, my, <laughs> my advice is stay with your project. It means mm -hmm. a lot of things and it means nothing. But if you have, I mean, it's always a question of empathy for me. I mean, I think if you find uh, the right script editor, it means uh, that you are in empathy with your author and the subject you treated. And you're going to encounter and to meet the right, author, the right script editor. Uh, because you feel it. You feel it. When you how you can resist uh, to a television which forces you to do a script and not another. Because you believe in your story, you believe in your author, and you can defend it. 
everybody is trying to to do something good because mm. it is I do think you're right that that if you have too many cooks or something in the soup you know but one thing I think is important is to try to figure out when you're in a case like that try to figure out why the person is saying that and mm -hmm. what's behind it because it, it often does seem like an aggression like the person says you know I really why is this character like that he shouldn't be like that or something but it probably you know I, unless you're, you're working with really weird people the people aren't trying to kill the project or something they're, they're, they probably are afraid or think that this won't work sincerely or something and, and as Noah said mm -hmm. that everybody's trying to bring in a solution the thing is I think often people don't don't really know and so maybe they're putting you know the finger on something else mm -hmm. because you know and so I think that's an important thing of trying to figure out why the person is saying this is he saying it uh, because he truly believes this specific point should be changed or because he's a bit panicky because he thinks it's going to be too art house and therefore he won't get the funding he wants through mm -hmm. this co-producer or whatever and then as you said either try to not uh, it, it doesn't have to be asserting yourself like I'm the director I'm but also it can be a bit like calming people down like you know don't don't panic mm -hmm. I know you have to have some commerciality or whatever in this because because we're going to get TV funding or something for example that's something that's very important in France is I think it's I can't remember 34 35 percent of the money comes from television mm. from s either through television pre-buying or or co-production or something Therefore, when you work, it, it's it's all you always have to pay attention in what your producers want. If you're a director or a writer, because in France you work very closely with the director, because you know the producer is going to be trying to think ahead of what what TV slot the person is it going to buy this for 8 p.m. or 10 p.m. And therefore, if you have this in it, they're going to think, oh, I can't put that on at 10. Therefore, I'm going to get the less money. And so, but I think that's one thing is trying to think that the people are primarily trying to help you. And, and either reassure them or, or, as you say, to assert, you know, there's no problem that we can do it or something. It almost feels like it's the marketplace, which is both the people who are producing and distributing, but also the audience, they are uh, exerting sort of maybe a, a large pressure on, you know, this business of, of structure and format and, you know, set kind of expectations at a time when writers, not just in, in cinema, but also in theater and in novels, are actually writing from probably more deeply personal places than maybe ever before, you know, and working, it's like the source is less geared towards format, even as the marketplace is more geared towards format. And it's almost interesting to watch the rise of genre at the same time, because it's almost like genre is, is a way that authors who want to talk about something personal are finding a way back to the marketplace by str filtering it through something mm. else that is, you know, sort of the container that can help them reach. But uh, I do think more and more, I, I don't mean that writers have never written from a personal place, but I think writers, they start the scripts thinking less about who's watching it in the mm. end. And you almost have to say to a, or I'm arguing out of two sides of my mouth right now because I don't want to be the person who's saying you have to say to the writer don't forget the audience but certainly the marketplace is saying don't forget the audience if the writer starts writing to the marketplace first they're not going to get anywhere with their, their material I think uh, through the years and and more recently I've found as budgets have gotten smaller and producers have gone to um, newer writers that uh, can work uh, outside of guild rates and so forth that you end up in a bit more of a, a mentorship role and sometimes um, th th I try to um, hold back from being totally prescriptive but I do like to respectfully pitch you know your logical next next step in the story could be this because what where are we ending up here because you're actually you know your through line isn't really working you've kind of gone off the rails maybe two-thirds of the way through or something this off you see patterns in newer writers um, uh, and, and where their scripts uh, where their through line breaks on occasion and then it's a question of understanding the the basic relationships at play in the story or the, the you know in, in terms of determining the through line of the story and ultimately what it's about and uh, and with enough experience in story editing you see the same things happen here and there and you begin to ask questions and push a little bit sometimes there's um, um, you have to respect the resistance you get at times from uh, from people who are going on but my instinct is this Sometimes the, the the resistance is fear. I don't. I cannot 
sh I, it must be my idea entirely. I cannot take uh, I cannot take this great idea from <laughs> this from this experienced person because it wasn't mine, and then I don't own my thing fully and truly. And I've had a, a few people like that uh, that I've worked with, and that can be very difficult too. And then you go, well you're going to carry that mistake through and it's not going to it's not you can't erase it later it's only going to magnify when you shoot the film cut the film and everything else it's going to be there and that and that problem is going to be a market problem and everything else i'm just telling you now yeah. right and uh, and i've seen it happen on a few things that i that i worked on